What up, loungers? We're back. Hope you guys liked the last episode. It went actually really well. We had a lot of downloads on that. It was one of the best downloads we've had in a long time. So thank you. Appreciate it. YouTube is a little slow. There is some uh, stuff working, though. It does seem the numbers do seem to be slowly increasing, which is great. I truly, truly appreciate it. So thank you for that. Monday morning. I'm home on Mondays. It's awesome. I don't really have a whole lot to do. I have some business stuff I got to take care of, some, uh, some balancing of the books. And I'm done for the day, which is great. I enjoy it. So thought I would get one out for you here and see what we can do. I know I promised I would go live on, on last week's video or on the upcoming videos. I haven't set that up yet. I don't know why. I just haven't. Time, most likely. Like I said last week, I was super busy. Didn't have much time. And I just trying to put it together is rough. But anyways, so I want to talk about something today that cracks me up and and. A lot of it's going to be egotistical. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But I worked in a super busy system. You guys know this. I don't need to tell you. So when I see when I see people posting about how they got up five times after midnight, what did you do with the rest of your shift? Like, what did, did you go back to bed and sleep? <sighs> Listen, I, I, I've been on systems where we run five calls before 2 a.m. Between 12 and 2, we're running five calls. And that's not on an engine. That's on a box where we actually had to transport some of those, right? Uh, and, and it's not like we always got canceled and got sent back to the station or we were on scene for 15, 20 minutes, went back to the station, and then back out again. These were transports. These were holding the wall, things like that. It wasn't uncommon for us to run five calls before 2 a.m. And granted, some of them were, you know, you show up, they don't want help, the AMA, we leave, cool, whatever. Regardless, we would run five calls before 2 a.m. So your your posts where they're showing, you know, and, and I was going to make a post about it and I didn't, but it was the, the um, oh my gosh, my brain just totally farted. Anyways, it'll come to me in a minute, but uh Years ago, I'd posted, uh, I mentioned in either a post or in one of my podcasts, I don't remember which, where an approximate number is a full arrest that I've worked. And people don't believe it. And that's fine. You don't have to. I, it, the people who I've worked with who listen to the show or follow the page know that there is no BS in what I'm saying. And it, my number is very high. I, I it's in the hundreds. I know for a fact it's in the hundreds. Like there's no question about that. It's probably the high hundreds. It's probably close to a thousand. And I know somebody out there, a lot of you probably are thinking, there's no way you ran that many. I did. Uh you don't have to believe me, and that's fine. I know what I've ran. People who work that area know what we've ran. And I, I've always said that in this industry, we could talk to people, leave out 90% of the details. And people still wouldn't believe our stories. I guarantee it. I know because I've done it. I've talked to people and, and there's, <laughs> there's a story where years and years ago, I was talking to my little brother and I had a call. Well, we were on a fire. It was a, it was a wildland fire, brush fire. And I slipped on a hillside and slid down and I was like dangling over a cliff and it was a huge cliff and, and, and it, it was, it was crazy. And again, I'm going to leave out 90% of the details of this call. Case in point, I was dangling over a cliff, hanging on by an ax, right? Like a pickaxe, right? That was it. Told my little brother this story one time and he had told my dad and my dad was like, there's no way that ever happened. I'm like, you don't even know half of the details of that night or that day, rather. Uh, you know, and then I've told people about there's a call where we were on a vehicle fire and ended up having three or four five gallon propane tanks that had just been refilled, right? And so we've got explosions coming out of the car. We get done with the fire. We leave. We're going back to station. TC happens right in front of us. Car comes almost through the windshield of the bus rig. I mean, just a crazy wild night, right? But you leave that stuff out, and people are and people are still going. There's no way that all happened. There's no way you had a vehicle fire with three, four propane tanks. Now, granted, people in our industry go, so what? 
Like, that's not a big deal. Like, we expect something like that, right? I mean, you don't expect it, but when somebody tells you, you're just like, yeah, that could happen. I don't see why it couldn't. Uh, you know, I had a guy, and it's it, the one that sticks out of my head, and, and I could be wrong on the time frame, but I know I'm pretty close. When I had posted that or talked about it, some this medic told me, he, he wrote into the page, and told me that he'd been running... 911 for 13 years, he had one full arrest in 13 years. Now, I'm going to assume he's in a pretty rural area. I mean, that's pretty safe to say. One full arrest in 13 years. Uh, <laughs> we were, when I was in the field, there was one point, my partner and I, we were counting it up, and we were, we were, we, we got to the point where we were actually documenting how many full arrests we were working because it was just so many, and it, it turned out to be, I think it was eight, no, one every eight calendar days. So that works out to about every third to fourth shift, we were getting a full arrest. That's just my unit alone. One every three to four days. There were times where we were doing back to back. I can remember, and the reason I remember it is because we had a call where it was a, a elderly female full arrest we cleared off of that once we were done we got lunch after lunch we posted and we only posted for a few moments and we get tapped out for peds traumatic arrest and i'm like are you kidding me two in a row and then on top of that because the way the call came in you know how when the calls come in a lot of times i'll come in just cardiac arrest da 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 right and then then at the end of the tail end of it you kind of hear oh 93 year old whatever this was that and then it was the peds arrest but it came across as a traumatic arrest da, 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 and then the child's age and i'm just like so when they when the initial call came I'm like geez two back-to-back cardiac arrest do they have another unit that maybe could take this or what have no no, it was ours. And so there's days where we were doing them back to back. And that's just one that I remember. And when I was at the hospital, there was a day I remember, I want to say we had four going on at one time just in the emergency room. And so you would just do donuts in the ER, you know, relieving people from compressions. You're just like, hey, you need a break. Yeah, boom, knock them out. Go to the next one. Hey, you need a break. Yeah, boom, knock it out. And we were just, we were low on, on staff at that point. And I think my total in a day in the emergency room was like six, I think. So I think we ended up doing like three in the ER and we ended up in the ICU and telly about three times as well. So it's, yeah, I've, I've done my share of cardiac arrests, right? Um, there's units in LA, at least back when I was there, <clears throat> I'm sure not much has changed. I doubt it. Uh, they don't get time to restock their unit. They go in, and as they're checking out their unit, you know, they're, they're hot. So I call them hot swapping or whatever you want to call it. Or, or I can't remember the term we use, but basically it's, it's hot swapping to where you're just constantly. The, the unit never stops. And they would either grab stuff from other rigs. So if we got to a hospital and we saw one of our units who was, say, a day car or uh, ops was there or – uh, one of our IFT units was there. We could swap. We would just grab their equipment. Like, hey, we need this stuff to restock. And, and we didn't even get to go back to ops. We would literally just restock off of the other units. Uh, there's a lot of times, too, we would just have ops where you'd have to call them up, say, hey, we need you to bring this stuff out, meet us at, you know, XYZ Hospital or whatever. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was crazy because you would you would clock in, you'd check out your rig, and, and you were gone the rest of the day. You never got back to station, ever, ever. And that was routine. Uh, we had, uh, you want to talk about food and eating, and I know I've done this on a podcast before, so I'm not going to beat it to death, but if you didn't bring your own food, you weren't going to eat. There's no possibility of you eating. Even at 2 in the morning, there were times where you weren't going to eat. Uh, and I think on that particular unit, um, I think my most amount of calls on that 24 unit was 26 or 27 calls. I think I didn't work it very often because I liked sleeping in my own bed. Uh, and so I usually worked a day car, not a 24, just because I wanted to go home at the end of my shift. 
Um, but that was on a box, not on an engine. And I think the most on an engine I ran was, I want to say about 21, maybe 23 calls on an engine. And, and that, that will beat you up pretty quick. And it's not like it was all medical aids. Um, it, I, I can remember that shift. And, and the reason I remember the shift was it was working for a captain who was an old childhood friend of mine. And so we just had a good time. It was a great 24 hours and I got so much experience in such a short amount of time. And it was, you know, we had, we had five STEMIs in one day. We had a vehicle fire, rubbish fire, all kinds of different medical aids. We had an overdose, a warming fire that was initially tapped as a structure, but it turned into just warming. But if you know anything about the fire side, that can make for an extremely long night. You know, between the vehicle fire, the rubbish fire and things, you've got to remove the hose bed or you got to pull the hose. You got to wash it, got to hang it to dry. You got to reload the hose bed. Like you got all this stuff you got to get done. And, and I think our last fire, that shift, we were tapped out at like four, four thirty in the morning for a vehicle fire. So, uh, by the time we got back to station, um, got things cleaned up, reorganized, set everything back up for the oncoming crew, you know, it was shift change and it, it just makes for a long night. But again, that particular night, I think I was up, I don't know, seven, probably about seven or eight times that night after midnight and i'm and i'm looking at my captain who's a friend of mine like i said and i'm like what was that you know at, the, at shift change we were sitting around the table we're all drinking our coffee getting ready to go home waiting for the oncoming crew to come on and, and give our report and i just looked at him and I go what was that like what happened yesterday because that was ridiculous and he goes you know i really don't know he goes it was a little slow last night I'm sorry, what? He goes, yeah, last shift was actually, that was a pretty slow shift for us. He goes, typically we're running 27, 28, 30 calls a night. We get every type of fire you could think of. We, He goes, that was actually a slow shift. I'm sorry, you should, you know, you should really pick up here again and we'll show you what it's really like. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I like my sleep. Growing up, I didn't really have a curfew very often because I was usually in bed by 10 o'clock. Like I hated being out later than 10 o'clock unless it was like the weekends and then what i typically do is uh if i was gonna really ex plan on staying out i would just take a nap or whatever but um i didn't like staying up late i still don't to this day i like to go to bed early just that's just me i don't but i like to uh and talking about busy shifts and busy crews you know i did an interview years ago and you can still hear them on spotify spotify still has the old episodes which is cool uh but holly from night watch if you guys remember that tv show night watch um, Holly, she had told me on the show, I want to say they had six GSWs a night, every single shift. It was six a night. And I remember this cause I'm thinking GSWs would get old real fast, right? I've worked a lot of GSWs in my time and you know, a lot of times they're not that hard to treat, especially if they're not in the, in the torso or head or what have you. And, and there's nothing real critical, you know, you wrap them up, you go like, it's not, super big deal especially if they're like through and throughs and it, i mean for those of you who've worked a lot of gsw you know what i'm talking about there's there's not a lot of bleeding there's not a lot to do uh, if it's not in anything any critical part of the body um but yeah that's insane having six gsws a night even in la even in the busiest parts of la we didn't run six gsws a night unless there was a retaliation type gang shooting going on where one person gets shot and the opposite gang shoots them and the opposite gang comes back and then the other one comes back and it's just an all-night you know warfare in the hood but for the most part we're not getting six gsws a night in la we're not i know that a lot of people like to think that you know compton and south central it's just a gang war it's not chicago was by far worse than what la is seeing at, at any point in time so um now don't get me wrong. I know there's crews that have ran more than this. I guarantee it. But if you've worked a busier system or even just as busy, do me a favor, DM me or leave a comment down below. I want to talk to you. I seriously want to talk to you. And I want to see how you guys are running, especially if you guys are in New York. I want to know how the New York City EMS works. I really do. I'm curious on how that works. So if you or you know anybody, have them reach out to me. Leave comments below. Um, I want to know, 
I, I really want to know how it works in, in New York. The other thing, and Chicago. I'd love to hear how that works. But what's the most amount of... <laughs> what is the most amount of calls you have ran in a 24? Put it below or DM me. I'm curious as to how many calls you guys have ran in a 24-hour shift. And let me know also, was that on an engine or was that on a... Um, squad or a, or an ambulance or what have you let me know how you guys run that let me know what you guys have done so yeah you're five times after midnight or you got up five times after midnight man that's a quiet shift i'm mean, truly for those of us who work busy houses you know that's that's not a lot it's really not does it suck absolutely i hate getting up even once after midnight that's why i don't do it that's why i didn't work 24s that's why i worked a day car i worked from 6a to 6p why because i didn't want to be getting up all night i like to go home lay in my nice comfortable bed with my wife and go to sleep and wake up feeling refreshed so um you know the thing uh, about these calls that i was talking about and then these houses and how busy they are one thing you got to understand this was every single day, every single day. It's not like it lets up, you know, and you're like, oh, we had a busy week. No, it's always like this. It, it, it just is. And the crazy part about it is that the busier the the area, the more units you have to back you up too, if you know what I'm talking about. And uh, the shift that I was talking about where I was on the ambulance where we did like 26, 27, whatever it was, uh, we had multiple units, multiple boxes in that area. And I want to say there was a minimum of like four additional units, uh, that were what we called the day cars. They didn't have a station. They just literally posted and floated throughout the city and usually a 12 hour shift. And they just stay in the rig all the time, the whole time, but they would back up to 24 cars, 24 hour cars. So you had five units in a very small radius and that's, it was still running in the 20s in a 24-hour period. And on my engine, uh, my busy engine house, we were running dual engines. We run dual medic engines. We ran the same amount of calls out of both sides. Both engines were running the same amount of calls. And it was just this one, that one, this one, that one, this one, all day long and all night long. It was ridiculous. So um, for those of you wondering, I'm talking about or where, I'm, where I was working uh, with the ambulance company, that was Care Ambulance, LA, Lincoln 1607, if any of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, there were people there that were running so hard and getting so little sleep and living on caffeine and energy drinks and stuff. They ended up with, with heart conditions. And that was like, you could work that station for a few years, but you couldn't work it for very long. Your health would deteriorate very quickly, even at the age of 2021. 20, you know, those memes where they're like, you know, EMS isn't stressful. I'm 26 and I feel great. And they show like the picture of this like 70 year old person sitting there. That's exactly what was happening to these people. Uh, and it just, it, it ruined them. And it, it, when you want to talk about how we hate people or we just, we want to be left alone. I did this podcast on isolation before and and how just dealing with the public in our in our roles, how we just start to like hate people, right? We want to be alone. Uh, there was a guy there, and I won't say his name, uh, and never smiled, always angry, always pissed off, looked miserable, loved fighting with people, wanted to get into it with patients. And he told me one day he wanted to go law enforcement. And I thought, uh-uh. No, that, that, that will be, and I told him this too, and, and, and we've talked, and, and I'll explain in just a sec. Uh, we talked about this, but I would always tell him, the day you get a badge and a gun is the day I quit. I don't want to be working with you when you're caught, because I know his mentality, and there's people who talk to talk but don't walk to walk, but this dude, whew, I've seen him scrap, and it's fun. I'll be honest with you, it's fun when he scraps because you know it's going to get wild. Uh, but I always said when he got his badge and a gun, I would quit. Fast forward a few years later, I'm working at a hospital at the time, and he comes walking down the hall in uniform with a badge and a gun. And I kid you not, I took my badge and I threw it at him. 100% threw it at him. And he just, it, no words were said. We didn't say hi. We didn't. Say, I just. I threw my badge, and he just starts laughing. It's probably the only time I've ever seen this dude laugh. And if you're listening or you're watching, fun times, my friend. 
fun times. And we got to work together. He would come into the hospital once in a blue moon, and we would talk and hang out and just reminisce. And, and there were times where patients would get wild, and he would jump in, and it was like nothing ever changed. But, uh, again, he, he went from a busy box to a very busy department as law enforcement. And uh, the people of that city should watch out. I'm just going to say it like that. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say his name. I'm not going to say his department. He knows who he is. I think there's a few people who worked with us back then and know exactly who I'm talking about. Uh, and so, yeah, you're five times after midnight. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not busy. It's not. It's not. It's not. So anyways, um, I don't really have anything else for you. I just want to get that together for you and talk about that because it was just cracking me up. So other than that, you guys have a good one. We'll see you on the next one. Keep lounging. Thank you.